Well, good morning from beautiful Utila, Bay Islands, Honduras. <laughs> wow, this is this is super shitty. I feel a little bit drunk. I'm like, you want some pasta, buddy? <laughs> you want to make some pasta? I have this idea of travel where the harder a place is to get to, the more enjoyable it'll be when we get there. Oh shit. Negative point four. Okay, hard. Turn, 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 turn. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Recently, we sailed to Utila in the Bay Islands of Honduras on a route notorious for piracy. After arriving safely, we explored the island and dove to 100 feet while enrolled in a free diving course. Well, good morning from beautiful Utila, Bay Islands, Honduras. <laughs> wow, this is, this is super shitty. <laughs> Basically what happened is we had a cold front come through the last two days um, and it really wasn't a big deal at all because that direction right there is north and so we're super protected to the north. So we had some strong winds but no chop and it was comfortable. Uh, now the wind has shifted to the southwest which is the totally exposed quarter of the anchorage. Uh, so we're getting some serious chop rolling through here we're getting some pretty strong gusts. Hopefully these winds don't last too much longer and uh, and hopefully we're not gonna have to try and motor out of this situation. I would say we're probably, that pier is probably 100 yards behind us. So we've got 100 yards, which is not as much as I would like, but it's enough for us to drag a little bit. Um, and then in the event that we have like a catastrophic dragging, I'm just gonna have to be real sharp and uh, be ready to engage that engine at a moment's notice. I will say though that this is a prime example of why it's good to have an oversized anchor. So again, we've got a 45 pound Mantis as our primary anchor. It's basically a storm anchor. And we also have an all chain road and we generally, unless we can't, unless it's a really crowded anchorage, we'll put out 10 to one scope because as a friend once told me, the chain that you have in your chain locker doesn't help you. <laughs> it's only the chain that you have out of your chain locker that actually helps you. So last night was actually really hard to sleep. It almost felt like we were under underway. So that was just a lot of kind of bracing yourself and just try to sleep while you're moving like this. <laughs> it's not terrible. We know we're safe and uh, it's kind of like a little adventure. Hey bud. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's a little wet out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad in here when you're just laying down and chilling. It's like comfortable, you know, there's a little bit of motion, but it's not that bad. You just don't realize what's going on. Like the world outside is just insane. <laughs> you know, it's like, don't go out there. Yeah. And then you look at the waves crashing on the shore. It's like, oh boy. Yeah, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> In fact, I was just editing an episode yesterday where I'm saying like, sometimes cruising is great and sometimes it sucks. Well, I can safely say today is one of those bad days. <laughs> like this is one of those times where it's like, this is kind of the price you pay or one of the prices that you pay for cruising is that sometimes you can just write an entire day off the books. Like you can be like, okay, today it's gonna suck. Like strap in. I feel a little bit drunk. I'm like, you want some pasta, buddy? <laughs> you want to make some pasta? <laughs> so yeah, we had a lot of leftovers yesterday, so I'm trying to make some spaghetti so that when we throw up, it'll be real messy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a trooper for cooking, I'll say that. All right, well, I'm gonna lay down before I throw up all over the camera. I know, right? Uh, we 
just weathered that cold front. It's back to, you know, blue skies, sunny, warm weather, and almost no wind. But there's another cold front coming in in two days from now. Here's the leading edge of the cold front, and here's the three primary islands of the Bay Islands, and here's the Honduran coastline. And this is what I'm used to with a cold front, is you get north winds once the front hits you, and you get you know light westerly winds before the front. Well, something that the Honduran mainland does here is it seems to get force the wind to come more out of the west. So if you go further north, you can see all the wind associated with this front is coming out of the north. But once you get close to the mainland, it, it's just as strong and coming out of the west. And so that's what made our night really uncomfortable in Utila the other day, because as you can see, the anchorage is very exposed to the southwest and even the west-southwest. And that's what made this really uncomfortable and even dangerous. And that fetch is really long. Like those waves are, have nothing to stop them for miles and miles. So it got real kind of dangerous here. So basically we just want to avoid that situation again with this cold front. Um, so there is a very small weather window first thing tomorrow morning where we can sail to Roatan, uh, which is the next island to the east of us and the largest of the Bay Islands. And it's got tons of really protected anchorages. And our weather window is going to begin tomorrow morning. So if we go to tomorrow morning around six in the morning, here we are. So you can see the winds are coming out of the southeast and that's gonna be perfect for sailing from Utila to Roatan. The winds are gonna be real light as well. This is all, you know, 14, 15 knots. So perfect to be on a, on a close reach. And that cold front comes in by about 11 in the morning the next day. So we'll get over there and be able to nestle into a nice small little anchorage and be nice and comfortable for the cold front. Uh, we decided to take Atticus to the fuel dock and uh, fill up on diesel and water and also groceries. Um, and then we're gonna get the boat ready so that uh, we can take off first thing in the morning. So. All right, mostly stocked up. Got my backpack full. This one as well, and then I recruited some help transporting the water here. <laughs> so it looks like Jordan did a good job too. Two water tanks, our Helio shower, and the diesel can probably full. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. How about what you got there? Well, this is our uh, Raycor fuel filter. I wanted to check it because we had a couple choppy days in the anchorage. And I just wanted to see if the there was much gunk getting stirred up in the tank and pushed through the filter. And I don't see any. So the filter is quite clean. And we'll probably have to motor part of the way tomorrow to Roatan. So that's why I wanted to double check this was good. better now now that we're underway um, I wanted to get going real early this morning because what little wind we're gonna have or what little wind we're forecasted to have today uh, is supposed to be early and die off you know around middle of the day so earlier that we left the more sailing we'd get to do less motor sailing but we've both been real tired the last couple days because that cold front really messed with our sleep so we're just both really tired and I figured waking up real early wouldn't wouldn't be such a good idea. But it's seven o'clock and we're underway, so I'm happy now. I, I haven't had my coffee. I haven't made coffee, I haven't had breakfast. So I, I'll be a whole lot better after I get a little bit of coffee in me. cruising at like 
three, three and a half knots, um, which is a little slow, but we are on a beam reach. And so the wind's coming right off of those mountains over there. We'll kind of cross our fingers that we pick up some wind here. Looks like the wind died out a lot sooner than we thought it was going to. So we're probably going to have to motor sail. Um, not too big of a deal. It's not that far, only 35 miles. So that'll probably take three and a half gallons. So, I mean, not that bad. Um, but this is something that I think is going to be pretty common for us, especially as we sail east. Because good weather windows for making easting in the trade winds generally involves some sort of weird weather pattern like some sort of prefrontal calm or something like that which is what we've got right now and so although we don't have 15 16 knots blasting us right on the nose which is a good thing we do have not quite enough wind to sail by at least if we want to get to Rotan today Jordan was getting the Genoa all tidy on the foredeck. There's this little panga that uh, kind of popped out of nowhere and started approaching Atticus. Um, and so it was a little bit kind of daunting because, again, it was just coming right towards us. So, um, you know, we just adjusted our course and kind of snuck behind its, uh, its stern. And now it's just heading out into the distance. So it's not that it was approaching us, it was just that we were in its way. <laughs> this kind of situation happens all the time. It's something we're getting more and more used to is you can't really react to a local boat appearing to approach you it, until they're really close to you because it happens so often and they don't have any sort of bad intentions that you'd be freaking out all the time. Our rule is if a boat comes in contact with us and the people actually try and touch the boat, that's when it's like everything stops. You know what I mean? That That's when it's we're no longer even pretending to be friendly. Up until that point, we are friendly and it's suited us really well because most of the time they're being friendly and we're not traveling around the world to be jerks to people that we meet who are trying to become friends with us. So. Disengage the autopilot, take the helm, and put her up to 2400. Okay, so here is Jonestown Bight, and we have shoals and reef off on the port side, and shoals and reef on the starboard side. But boy, I'm glad it's a nice sunny day, because you can really make out the reef. The chart is saying that there's a good anchorage right between that shrimping boat and those houses over in this corner of the anchorage. And I think that sounds good to me. Okay, turn hard to port. 
There's a low-lying, like, power line or something over there. Okay, hold that course. Okay, turn to port. Five eight. Hold that. Four seven. Depth is one zero. Oh. One zero. Yeah. Hold. Turn hard to port. Going hard to port. What's Point the depth? Five. What? Point three. Point one zero. What is it now? Oh shit. Negative point four. Okay, hard. Po turn, 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 turn. To port? Yes, keep turning, bud. <laughs> okay, straight. Give us some gas. More. What's the depth? Negative point three. Okay, slow it down. What is it now? Negative point three, negative point one. Point two, point three. Point five. Point eight. One. Okay, start turning to starboard. Boy, so this is tough because this whole area is like 25 feet deep or more, and that's just too deep for how narrow this whole bay is. We'd have to put in a, out a lot of scope, especially since the middle is like 40 feet deep. So we're just poking around trying to find a shallow enough spot, but some of the areas, like we just ran aground a little bit over there. And uh, so it goes from real deep to real shallow real quick. That's the tough thing though, is the water's so murky in here that as we're poking around, I can't tell if we're like seconds from running aground or not. Okay, depth? Uh, 45. 45, okay. Yeah, it's, it's too deep over here. Let's head over there and check out that restaurant area. The chart says that there's a shoal over there, but I uh, might as well just figure it out. Okay. Yeah, turn hard to port. port. Okay, depth? Uh, 23. 23? Yeah. All right. Well, that's better. 15. 15? Yeah. Boy, this is great. This might be our spot. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's drop anchor here. Put her in a neutral. Better? Time to relax. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, it is a beautiful anchorage. Yeah. So that was the first time that uh, we've gone into an anchorage that was complicated and didn't have a whole lot of information about it. Uh, our, the one cruising guide that we have that we got from a friend in a digital form just didn't say a whole lot about this area. And, uh, and yet we just sort of surveyed the whole anchorage going real slow bumped on the bottom once. <laughs> Haven't done that in a long time. And, uh, but slowly but surely got a good idea of what the bottom looked like and then found a good spot, that what we think is a good spot. We'll see how we hold in this cold front. That'll be the test, but that was definitely empowering, you know, to not really rely on information from other people, but just kind of rely on our depth sounder and just going real slow and checking the area out. That was, that was cool. Well, like verging on fun, mostly stressful. <laughs> <laughs> it was right on the border. <laughs> yeah, that's as, mu as much as we can ask for. <laughs> next week on Project Atticus. Well, the weather's starting to pick up. We're getting the first signs of this cold front coming in. I'm gonna try to film going through this. Woo! Oh that was kind of nerve wracking. Where am I? <laughs> Green rolling hills around, flat, flat water. It's cold and it feels good. Actually, hold that, turn left. One left. Hold. Hey guys, 
guys. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, just want to let you know there are four spots still available on Sail Libra's Atlantic Crossing coming up this May. So if you've ever kind of closed your eyes and wonder what it would feel like to do a crossing, to wake up to nothing but blue all around you uh, for days on days on end, uh, without the stress of having to outfit the boat, captain the boat, weather plan, or provision, check it out. And don't forget to use promo code PAOFFSHORE so you can get your $1,000 discount. Okay guys, see you next week.